rolling sound part. Here we go. One point six seven. And starting right around. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Lone Star Film Festival Film Talk for The Get Together, feature film written and directed by Will Backey, uh, who'll be joining us, as well as John Simpson, uh, sorry, John Michael Simpson, a producer, and, and Chad Warner, an actor. Fellas, where you at? Bring, yay, you're there, hey. we did it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Magic. We're here, we did it. Well, my job's done, I'll see you guys later. I'm just kidding. Yeah, good Thank talk. you guys so much for uh, taking a little time out of your day to uh, talk about your super duper awesome film. Thanks for having us. Yeah, man. Uh, so congratulations on such uh, such an awesome movie. Uh, being one of the programmers, obviously, I got to uh, got to watch it and and um, be one of the curators. And, and we were like, we loved it right up right at the top. We were like, oh man, you know, a movie that feels like a movie, which is saying something in an independent world, you know. <laughs> Um, so congratulations on hitting that mark, you know, and it was very obvious right up front. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time, so we'll just we'll get into just a couple quick questions that I have. Um, for those of you out there that are watching this film talk who might not have seen this film yet, um, what it's about, it's, uh, it's I'm just going to give it to you straight. Uh, it's about a recent college postgrad and a soon to be uh, engaged couple. Uh, and a failing musician, all dealing with realities of growing up as their three stories intersect over the course of one night at a house party in Austin. So that's the uh, the tagline there. Um, fellas, uh, real quick, um, since this is you know a Texas film festival, I'm curious why uh, Austin, Texas is a backdrop for the film. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a stab at that shot. Uh, it's the most fun town. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm from Dallas. Uh, I went to you know college at Baylor in, in Waco, and then kept moving down 35, and and got to Austin as fast as I could. And um, man, it's just a really fun town. There's just so many different personalities. Um, I've been here for about 10 years now, and I think just the um, the difference in thought that the people have tons of different beliefs, and you've got the right, you've got the left, and and everyone kind of coming together in this melting pot and. And everyone tends to get along when you're, you know, day drinking and having a beer out at Treaty Oak or, you know, somewhere on uh, South Congress. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's my favorite town and just a lot of great stories. How to hear we thought we put those on the screen. Yeah, perfect. I, I couldn't agree more being a resident of Austin myself. Um, okay, beautiful. Um, I feel like you definitely captured the feel of Austin, uh, an Austin house party, um, uh, which is tough to do. And, I, and I'm sure that even for the movie value of it, you had to pull back a little bit of the reality of a Austin house party. Um, but, you, but you captured it as best, like for a film, you know, you don't want to show everything in Austin house party, what goes on in <laughs> Austin house party. Um, but you, you know, one of the things that us independent filmmakers do is we keep our scripts localized. You know, you want to keep it in one location as, be as best you can. And you did that by creating a story that takes place primarily um, at one location, at a, at a house party at night. Um, there's a few other spots sprinkled in here and there, but it takes place there, um, and the, all the stories sort of intersect there. Um, what would you say are some of the challenges that you encountered um, while shooting overnight? The entire thing takes place at nighttime um, at a house party uh, with those kind of storylines. John Michael, um, you can well, take that. You want me to go for it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, overnights were uh, very fun. I feel like uh, I would wake up every every day and have, you know, you have that little mini panic right before you, you go to set. Uh, on this one, it was just like, do we have the extras for tonight? <laughs> um, because we wanted it to feel like a big, you know, booming party. Um, you know, we, we didn't necessarily have the budget to be paying, you know, 100 extras to be there. Um, and so another reason why I think Austin was great is because we just have um, years of, you know, building up community here and people that we love and other filmmakers. And so it was just a lot of like begging and reaching out and following up and trying to incentivize and find fun ways to get people to come out, make the atmosphere good. And so I, I would just say that, yeah, probably just getting uh, the numbers we needed for the party was probably a big, big challenge. And then add on that it was overnight, you know. And we're asking our friends, hey, can you stay here till 4 a.m.? I know you got to go to work tomorrow, uh, <laughs> but we need you. Um, and uh, and they came through, but that was definitely probably one of the 
uh, the bigger challenges, I think. I can only imagine. And two, you know, just in case you didn't make your day or something and you got to start the next day uh, at the same, in the same background or the same shot, and you're going to try to replicate that. I mean, I can't, I mean, I can't even imagine the nightmare of being like, who was standing where? Do we have that guy? Um, were you, was there ever any moment where you were just like, oh my God, we're going to have to, we're going to have to change that. We're going to have to look this way a little bit more because that other guy can't be there. Were there any oh, man. like that? Well, you could probably speak to the edit room dealing with all that. Fun. Yeah, we had a great uh, scripty named Paul Vance who would just lean over my shoulder uh, constantly and say, like, that guy is in the wrong shirt. Or, you know, we'd have to move extras around a lot in, because we'd have them in, like, double coverage. And so um, the one area that we didn't concern ourselves with on that end was production design because we told Eller Coltrane, um, who's the star of Boyhood, is actually our production designer for this movie, we just said, like, when in doubt, just throw trash everywhere around the yard, <laughs> uh, solo cups and beer cans. And that's pretty much uh, the extent of what we did to kind of make it look like an Austin party. And it was pretty accurate. Yeah, it, it certainly felt like it. Now, uh, in that regard, did you guys rent that house for the month or is it an Airbnb? Or, or is that some, that's not someone's house, is it? It <laughs> is someone's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. You poor man. <laughs> Poor lady. Poor lady. But, oh yeah, God. yeah. So tell um, me a little bit about that. Yeah, we we went around and checked Airbnb and VRBO, and we told them exactly what we would be doing. And uh, we found this perfect house. We needed to find a house that, like, fit, that would allow us to shoot overnights without disturbing neighbors. And because it was, it's a party movie, so it's going to be loud. And But also felt Austin and felt inner city enough and thankfully found this place i mean just like literally just right out of town uh and yeah it was an interesting and fun experience being an indie film on a uh at a person's house but i'm trying to be diplomatic here no, <laughs> everything, went, everything went great <laughs> right i, I assume as much I, I mean i can only imagine that, uh, that um, yeah that in, in itself is just like a you know a lot Nothing of people may not broken. know that that you know when you do have a lot of money and you do have a lot right. of resources you build a set or you whatever right but when you're in an independent level like this you do the best you can and you guys you did a great job it, it plays it works and it's a, it's a great backdrop for the film <laughs> um so like i mentioned before the film has three separate sort of uh storylines and, and and kind of uh plots not plots but storylines um it, so that makes for a really interesting and fluid storyline. We, we stick with you the whole time. We're very curious to find out what happened. So great job. And I, I'm, I'm curious how much of it was written exactly that way and how much you ended up, you know, maneuvering for the edit. But I guess my, my overall question, though, is kind of going back to that, um, those different storylines in that one location. You, you know, you think on paper, oh, it's great. We'll just shoot all these one scenes here and we'll be done. But then you start thinking, wait a minute in two more pages, I'm going to need her in the background because, right. So do you, I guess, Will, do you want to tell me a little bit about the monumental task of trying to know where everyone is at all times? Yeah, definitely. That was a really big challenge. And because, you know, you write it one way and you have it all kind of figured out of what you want to do, but then especially once you find the location, then everything changes even more because you have to kind of structure scenes in rooms that you'd never really seen when you were writing. And, uh, um, you know, you've got the backyard as a location, the front yard as a location, the bedrooms. And so we really like squished everything in, um, you know, two bedrooms we were filming in. Another bedroom was sort of our like uh, casting holding station. Another one was like a production office. So we used every you know, square inch of this house. And um, I think with the three storylines, you know, we, we had, I had actually printed out like blueprints of the house and had drawn out like where every character was and how they were all moving about and on a page by page basis, like how they all kind of overlaid. So it was a lot of coordination and uh, you know, we're really excited by uh, the end product because it, it all is pretty dang close by a minute to minute basis of like where everybody is and um, if they're in the right spot or not. Cause you can't have a character who's having one conversation in one bedroom and also out by the pool talking to somebody else. So we had to make sure all of that worked and stayed as true to it as we could. And it, and it does. It really does. For those of you that are going to watch this movie after this, uh, this Q&A or have already watched it, you know what we're talking about. It really plays very nicely. Uh, so good job on that. Um, so moving right along. Uh, so finding, the, you know, this is an ensemble piece at the end of the day. Um, and finding, you know, the right cast is 
extremely important for a project like this. Um, obviously, the, for me, one of the more breakout uh, actors that you had uh, is Courtney Parchman, um, who I believe you build as introducing, so I'm assuming this is her first feature. Um, she was absolutely fantastic in, in the part. She really, she really brought you in and kept you the whole time. Um, what, what was the casting process like? Did you have a lot of relationships with your cast? Because you have a stellar set. Everybody in there, you know, a lot of them are Austin. If you're from Austin, you, you know films in Austin, you recognize them, you know, like I recognize Chad right away. There, there's just certain faces that you, that you are synonymous with the, the film world. So did you know some people or are these all just, how did the casting process go for this? Yeah, Chad, you want to take a step with that? Yeah, yeah, we, it was kind of a mix. Uh, in, in terms of our four main cast, I know Will had worked with Johanna on uh, his first feature or his first narrative feature, Believe Me. And we just, we loved her work. And I think even this part was written for her uh, from the beginning. And her fiance, uh, played by Jacob Artist, we discovered him, I think just through, gosh, I can't remember, but I mean, he just fit the look, he fit the bill. He was and so funny in it and great. And then um, Courtney is actually a friend of mine that I met when I was living in LA. And my niece is actually like her biggest fan on Instagram. And so <laughs> it was kind of like this combining of worlds that, and I, I had a read for it and Will fell in love with her too. And yeah, and then uh, Alejandro Rose Garcia, played, uh, also known as Shaky Graves, he was one of the first person people we cast and he was he got the script and even though he's a very successful musician he uh, uh just fell in love with the character of caleb and knew exactly what this kind of guy who has been attempting his dream and is just shy of the age of 30 but it's like things aren't going as well as he thought it, it would in his early 20s and um i mean man he just he read the role and, and fit it perfectly but yeah and then in terms of the rest of the ensemble, it's a mix of comedy friends that John Michael and I have met from the improv world, and then uh, Will's buds, who he's done shorts with and whatnot. And I think we kind of wanted that blend of authentic Austin, which we got a lot of people who either have deep ties to Austin or uh, are from here originally. And so I think the casting process was huge. Um, in that in that sense because yeah there was we had to have a lot of roles and a lot of people fit the bill perfectly and thankfully i mean just everyone really showed up and shined and it it ended up being such a fun austin party <laughs> just naturally i mean it, it was work and every night was work but it also felt like a party every day yeah but, yeah for sure now um how many days what was your production shoot like how, how many days did you guys end up shooting We shot for um, initially 12 days, uh, and then we ended up doing um, a pickup day with Bill Wise, um, who was awesome as uh, Damien's dad. And, uh, and, and that's also when Will and Joe kind of go, got to go around Austin and pick up some other uh, exteriors and you know just some different things that we, we realized we could use a little bit more coverage for. Nice. Okay. So, so 13 days. days, I think, all in all. Yeah. And and how long in those 13 days did it take for you guys to normalize on your on your overnight schedule? Because that 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 first day, you know, I'm assuming you guys maybe started on a Monday. I'm assuming that Sunday, you know, you were like, okay, so gotta go to bed, get some rest or whatever. But then like the, you know, it's it's such a strange feeling staying up all day Monday to wait for Monday night, you know. And yeah. then I guess my other question too would be, did you ever find yourself uh, when you shut, send out any um, call sheets or whatever, find yourself going like, wait, so what day? Because we're overnight, so it's it's. Oh yeah. Any were there ever was there ever any couple <laughs> like you know where you're like, whoops, sent that to everyone. It's tomorrow, or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, uh, that was every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything starts blending in after about three days. We decided to <laughs> throw like a big like pre-production party, which I hadn't really done before, but it ended up being this blowout thing at my house with all the cast and crew just to get, it was like the night before, just so we kind of get on, you know, the trajectory of like, hey, we're staying up every single night. Um, so it was it was funny because it, it really, you, you get used to it really quickly until you look in the eyes of all your extras who are not doing that every night. <laughs> and by 3 a.m. we're like jazzed and they're just like fading yeah. fast. So that was kind of a, a funny way to experience it. 
Yeah, I know it's definitely really tough on the uh, cast who would who would be scheduled. Uh, you know, I know Caitlin who plays. Gosh, sorry, I can't remember her name. Uh, Lexi. <laughs> Lexi. Uh, she would be there on Tuesday, and then would have to come in on Friday. So she's trying to stay up all night, but also live a normal life in Austin. And those are the people that we were like, we're so sorry, because <laughs> we were all. We were all living the twilight zone and they were, they were living their normal lives and being like, Oh yeah. Got to stay up all night on Tuesday. Yeah. Go to work on Thursday. Tried so. to stay away from like carbs and heavy, heavy carb loaded meals. Cause that lunch <laughs> yeah. would kick in and we'd always be like, Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And we just came up with like, we would blast music. We would uh, do literally like skits on, on set <laughs> and just do whatever we could to keep each other entertained and, awake mm -hmm. and motivated and nice and you pulled it off you have a movie at the end of the day yeah. which is one of the hardest hey things to do. yeah um, it really is uh well i think that's all that i've got for you gentlemen thank you so much for coming on doing a little um film talk with us here uh again for those of you out there who may have not seen this film just yet do yourself a favor get on and watch it uh, it is called the get together for those of you that have seen it you know what i'm talking about go tell your friends about it and tell them to uh, find everywhere that they possibly can to find and support this awesome movie you guys are awesome thank you for your time uh, thank again, you william take care thanks for having us appreciate it